Since 1909, the Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries has been rebuilding the lives of the homeless, addicted, poor, and abused. The Rescue Mission provides emergency shelter, food, clothing, substance abuse treatment, job training, spiritual guidance, and much more. Each day, the nonprofit organization services more than 1,800 men and women and children. I'm pleased to welcome the president and CEO of the Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries, Dr. Chad Audi, along with Chief Operating Officer Barbara Willis and Thomas Harris, who is a formerly homeless veteran who now works for the Rescue Mission. Welcome to American Black Thank Journal. you for having us. That's a long time, 105 years, yes. but, but certainly the homeless problem uh, and the problem of the poor has been with us longer. Right? Yeah, and unfortunately, it's growing. It's yeah. not getting better. It's not it's getting not, better, right. No, right. Actually, there is a little change right now. We have more families who are homeless versus what we used to see, the traditional homeless one person. A single people. Right. Yeah. And there is a differentiation between uh, homeless, the people that they perceive as the chronicle homeless who sits on the uh, sidewalks of the streets and the actual people who one, we all want to check away from being homeless ourselves. Right. So, so we right. wanted to people to understand sometimes that a homeless person is still a human being like any of us but went through some uh, circumstances that caused him to become homeless. So he's not always the homeless that we see right. on the bridge uh, or on the sidewalks. Right. Uh, the, the family problem, I think, uh, is the thing that we're seeing a lot in Detroit right now because oh, of the economy yes. uh, and, and the struggles that we've had. You guys right. have got so to we, see that in the center quite a bit. And we see the families coming in. Um, even uh, we feed the homeless uh, at one of our sites uh, in the evening, and we see families coming in there. Um, so it's uh, just epidemic almost, yeah. you know, in terms of uh, whole families being a part of the homeless right. and, situation. And is that, is that something that you see uh, people come in and out of? In other words, uh, maybe they're homeless for a stretch, uh, maybe they find a place uh, for a while, but they, but they can't just sort of get back on their feet permanently. After the housing crisis, uh, a lot of people suffered. Uh, involuntarily. Uh, right. It could be they were paying rent and the, the, the landlord, uh, his house was foreclosed on, turned out that the family had to be homeless. They have to be put out. And sure. uh, for first time in many years we've seen people uh, who never been homeless in their lifetime. Uh, they lost their jobs and I can tell you real quick that one time on the line of the shelter we had a person who was at one point in time an executive of one of the big three had his two sons with him standing in line. Is that right? So, uh, yeah, the face of homelessness has been changing, it's changing a lot. It's changing, sure. And, uh, but we're here to address those issues. And we think with the, uh, ho with the houses that we have in the city, the abandoned homes, there is an opportunity for us to rehab on some of them and place those working homeless because we got a new category. It's called working homeless. Uh, right. So, so we we are able to bring those people back to those homes, uh, or build an apartment buildings and make sure that because dealing with families is totally different than dealing with an individual. Sure. You need a whole different setup. It's expensive to do it unless if we use the resources that we have within the city. Right. So that's what right now we're trying to do. We we we're matching some of the work homeless families instead of being in a shelter or in an organization like ours go and have their own homes as long as they can pay the utilities right. and maintain the house and bring more people into Detroit versus letting people go outside Detroit. Right, and leaving leaving empty houses. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Harris, you, you seem to have a pretty fascinating story. Why don't you tell me about how you came to be homeless and then how you uh, how you moved to the point where now you work with uh, these folks at the homeless shelter? Well, <clears throat> I'm like one of the people he spoke of who w had a job and the c business went out of, you know, the went out of business. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was very tough for me living check to check and now no check at all. Right. So I heard about the mission and I went there and, you know, got help from them and subsequently took a job with them. Right, right. And how long, how long of a stretch uh, would you say it was that you were, that you were on the streets? Um, it was pretty close to five years. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. a long time. And, and, and what was your, uh, your military service? Uh, Marine Corps. Um, I was um, United States Marine Corps, 
San Diego, trained there. Um, I was injured in combat training, um, ruptured my sciatic nerve and broke my right bone in my right foot. And, um, you know, I was uh, finished combat training and came back out. And that's kind of how I got into drugs and stuff like that, right. trying to manage the pain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's such a sort of, that's gotta be a very common story or yeah. a common kind of story. If you, uh, well, first of all, we're very proud to be able to help. And today is 9/11, so we can actually talk more about our veterans too, uh, uh, right. who, who sacrificed their life for us. Unfortunately, we have to deal with veterans coming home and, and being homeless and not being given any sort of support or, or opportunity. Exactly. So. Uh, Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries and for sure other peer organizations is doing their utmost to make sure that those guys would have their dignity and respect and and we provide them with the services that they need so they can reintegrate back into the society and become a citizen, tax paying citizen. Um, and that's exactly what we've done with Tom and with a lot of other people that we do. So we're very proud of being able to provide those services, even though it breaks our heart to know that people, after they do everything they can, <laughs> they come back to no home. To nothing. So uh, we, uh, we at Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries every day now, uh, we emphasize on the fact that we need to preserve the dignity and respect of the people who we serve. Right. Don't look at their color. Don't look at their religion. Don't look where the background is. There's Just make people sure who need help. The, yeah, give them all the the things that they need to get back on their feet and become member of this uh, tax-paying individual, uh, good citizen into our community. And and Tom is a great demonstration to this. He's he had some bad times. Uh -huh. Uh, but today he's uh, he's working. He's he's one of our best employees. Uh, he encouraged others to be doing uh, exactly what he says. He become a, uh, a speaker, encouraging speaker to others to show you know if I could do it, you can. So do can it. you. Sure. So uh, uh, that's what we have every day, and this is what we do every day. Right. And we have beautiful apartments for our veterans. Yeah. Where uh, talk about uh, the, the the sort of housing you guys uh, provide, and that's that's changing too, right? Yeah, we have some beautiful apartments uh, for their individual apartments uh -huh. for the veterans uh, in Highland Park, uh -huh. 211 Glendale. We also have uh, some in a, another facility uh, at 13220 Woodward. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> they have case management services, uh, looking for jobs, job readiness, uh, looking for apartments, um, just trying to give them the whole spectrum. Uh, spiritual, they need spiritual guidance. Sure. So just to make them feel um, that they are an integral part coming home and, and not sure. just somebody on the side, but, but an integral part of society. And our whole goal is to put them back into the community. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Harris, t uh, t tell me about what you think it was uh, that that uh, that made the difference for you. Um, what about the rescue mission, uh, or what about some of the support uh, you got? Sort of turn that corner for you. Well, I think what made the difference for me is um, the nurturing that the rescue mission provides, the leadership, the respect that they give you, which gives you the confidence to you know completely turn yourself around. Right. Right. Uh, right now in the city, there, there's a lot of talk about uh, moving the, you know, uh, support agencies uh, from where they are. And, you know, you've got all this sort of development and excitement in, uh, in parts of the city that used to be sort of the hub Midtown. of these services. I mean, Midtown, you know, I don't, I don't even call it Midtown. I haven't switched from Cass Corridor because sure. that's what it was when I right. grew up. Uh, and I was, that had a very different mm -hmm. uh, meaning and purpose. Uh, how tough is that uh, for us to, to, to balance? Well, see, uh, if you go to any, any city in the in, in United States, you'll find that the rescue missions and the providers are in Midtown. Right, in that kind and, of... And uh, this is not because we chose to go to Midtown. This is because the homeless are there. That's where they are. To go and, and help them. Uh, and 
moving the problem does not solve the problem. Right. What we need to do is see how can we become part of the economic development within any city because we're human and the people we serve are human who are taxpayers in the city. And there is a lot of ways to help them. So if it doesn't, you know, why don't you give me some money to facelift my building instead of telling me you got to be out of here. <laughs> you got to move, you right. Know? So there is a lot of ways to make sure that the individuals continue to feel part of the economic development within their own city. Because when newcomers came in, those are newcomers, but we've been here for but a people very long have been time. Here, sure. So we're not, it's not time for us to say you're second uh, citizen, second class citizen. You are the same as everybody else, and then we will remain where we're at no matter what the pressure is. Right. And we think we're doing a great job, and we think we're feeding into the community. And our philosophy is we're transforming people's life to become able to like anyone they see anywhere and we provide them with all the needs and the services they they, they can survive the economic development yeah. in a new city is there a benefit to the rescue mission from the development that's that's happened i mean is it is it uh is it helpful to have more people more businesses definitely uh, i guess more of a, of a local economy the more growth into the uh, the community uh, we can become the suppliers of a lot of uh, work right. people because our guys, we train them and then they go and find a job. So there, when there is a big economic uh, movement uh, and development happening, that's a better opportunity for our guys to get more jobs. To and get become, jobs. Yeah. And have a good sustainable living. Right. Where if it's bad, then we're graduating all those guys with a lot of skills and they can't And they have jobs. nowhere. Well, and that's been true for a long time true. In, in Detroit. Yeah. So we welcome the, the economic development yeah. into our city. And then we are hoping to plug in those guys into jobs and give them, hopefully, give right. them priority. And we ask from the government also here, especially the state, to give some uh, incent in incentives to the businesses when they hire people coming right, out of prison hire, right. and people who are formerly homeless uh, through taxes uh, or mentally ill people who've been formerly mentally ill and been in some kind of um, medicine. So yeah. they give the organizations <coughs> who hire them some, in tax some incentives, incentives to, to so they can participate. hire those people versus just saying yeah. you're bad. Yeah. Yeah, yes. we've, we've got some work to do there, sure. I think, with the state and with the businesses. Yes. But uh, it's great that you guys have been around as long as you have and are doing the work. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me.